breathe, you're moving energy through your body. Something as simple and yet as profoundly powerful as the breath is what all of yoga actually has as its foundation. The way I think about my body is a little bit like the way I think about my car. I've looked after my car pretty well. I drive it very gently. And I think I've looked after my body. And I really didn't want to know what was making it work. I just presumed it would look after itself pretty well. And, and for many years, it did that. Now, when I went to a cardiologist because I had arrhythmia, the doctor said to me, um, can you feel your heart is, is beating you know, out of sync? And I said, no. And he said, you can't feel your own heart? And I said, no. I simply was not in touch with my own body. Meanwhile, my wife, who is a trained yogi, started teaching yoga and wanted me to take yoga. And I tried a couple of times and I sat on the floor and sitting on the floor is just not for me at all. I'm hopeless on the floor. It wasn't until she started doing chair yoga that I said, ah, now here is something which really I can do. I can do these exercises. I can move and I could not be in a position where I'm really hurting all the time. It made yoga accessible to people with all types of challenges, whether they had MS or they had an injury to a part of their body or they were older or they had been a stroke survivor. who can't get down to the floor, who can't get up from the floor. It's a real challenge to do yoga, and you spend so much time on your wrists in a regular yoga class, and there's a fear of that, and there's a fear of standing and falling. Chair yoga sits in a beautiful space where, you know, you've got practitioners who couldn't practice. They just, for whatever physical, and there are all sorts of physical ailments that prevent people from practicing. It may be temporary, it may be chronic. This is a great opportunity to have a full practice. led me to take chair yoga was my knee. I fell a couple of times and I wasn't able to bear weight on the floor. I had difficulty getting into poses. Vinyasa flow wasn't working for me anymore because all the up, down, up, down and the cobra stuff just wasn't congenial to my body anymore. Well, I had my hip replacement in I think 2003, and then the knees were like, the last one was like three years ago, and the one was three years, kind of three years before that. As I've gotten older, I'm not really equipped to handle a lot of classes that are offered, and I thought, well, I'll try the chair yoga and see what that is. This was something that would take pressure off my knee, help me a lot, and at some point, I realized that it was so significant in terms of the benefits way and above some of the poses that I could get on the floor. The thing that's great about the chair yoga is that you don't have to start out with that kind of strength. You can start from wherever you are. I was diagnosed with MS at age 27. It didn't start progressing at all until I was in my 40s. And then it just started progressing. So my daughter would take me to yoga and I wasn't able to do it. When I took over the chair yoga class, I have been so inspired by the students, the clients that have come. Jackie, she is 95 and she has Alzheimer's. She doesn't know what she's doing when she comes into the yoga class, but luckily she comes with a beautiful young woman who is named Tanya. I think you live with Tanya. Oh, yeah? yeah. Maybe I do. Okay. Don't tell her I don't remember. <laughs> I'm a caregiver and um, taking care of my patient. Her daughter called up and said she wants us to do 
a yoga class in the Palisade. And so Jackie amazes me because number one, her body is 95 years old and she's able to do everything we do, even complex things. During class, you would not even suspect that she has Alzheimer's. She is active, she is funny, she is joking with me. Her concentration is complete. And she remains that way until about five minutes after the class in which she does not know where she is or who I am. But I think it's been incredible for her to have this hour twice a week where she's stimulated and where her brain is functioning perfectly normal. Do you take an exercise class? I seem to end up in one, whether I want to or not. One of my longest friends is a woman named Lupi, Lupi Rios. She was born in Mexico. She had a very loving family, but her father died suddenly when the children were small and the mother could not support them. So some of them went to orphanages and Lupi had to drop out of the third grade and work. I worked when I was 10 years old, always housekeeper. Drop school because when I don't have enough clothes to chain and the teacher every day check hands and everything and clothes and, and hair, you get showered. It's like bully. The children may bully for you because you, you not go clean and stuff like that. So at some point they came, she came to the United States and when she was a young woman, I met her because I needed someone to help clean my house. Many years have gone by. I think we've been friends for 40 years. And so her body was getting bent and tired and a little uh, strained from all the hard work she continues to do. And I said, you need yoga. I want better life. Her life has been about her family and taking care of everyone else and she's feeling that it's time for her to take care of herself. And so she's committed to doing it, certainly by including chair yoga in her life. My hand is more light. I like it so much, my chair. Not the other in the floor because I, I can't go down. <laughs> Someone that I knew came to me and asked me if I would give them private yoga sessions, that they were in excruciating, constant pain. November 10th of 2015, after I had a second round of surgery, I woke up and I could not lift my arms and I felt I couldn't lose my legs. I couldn't get out of bed. Could not open up the hands and this person was a masseuse. And we found that I had a massive infection in my body. I also had no magnesium. Could not find a position to sit, lie, or stand in that was comfortable. Could barely make it up the stairs to my studio. I was literally crawling on the floor. <laughs> so I sat on a couch and sobbed, and sobbed, and just sobbed. So this went on, and she kept scheduling hour and a half sessions with me. And for most of it, she cried. And for most of it, I could barely get anything to move in her body without making her feel worse. I was having so much problem breathing because I had so much pain. There was nothing I could figure out to get her to do. And finally, it occurred to me, I had to start with breath. We started with breath work, with me crawling into her studio. <laughs> so I worked with her on trying to get her breath to be a little longer, a little smoother. And we would do that for a few times. It was very difficult. She just worked on my calming breath um, to get me into my body. And then I would add, can you lift your chest as you breathe? Pause. Can you soften your chest as you breathe? Can you open one finger as you breathe? Two fingers. Can you open your hand? That would be the most she could, and it would be so painful she would pull in. I think it was two months of privates. 
just to let my arms hang and move them in a kind of like rag doll kind of way. Uh, once again, started the stimulation, the oxygenation, the energy, and it helped get the breath back into my body. So we went joint by joint with breath, guiding us, and just softly reaching for a little bit more capacity. She was encouraging to me, just do what you can. Just do what you can. Just stay in your place and do what you can. And don't judge it and ah, don't judge it, right? Breath was the entrance into this experience, which then helped enable her to return to a healthy state. Dr. Sandra Fallon has become a dear friend, and we have an unusual relationship where she comes as a yoga student, but also as a scientist, so that our yoga sessions are more like a laboratory of yoga. And we investigate, and we think about, and we make connections, and we try new things. We're always creating new variations of a posture. Resilience is so important mentally, physically, emotionally, in so many ways. So by spending time with myself and my breath in yoga, just me and my breath, just the two of us, I not only tap into resilience, I've learned how to expand my breath at the same time, which in turn has allowed me to stimulate my vagus nerve, which is so critically important in terms of reducing inflammation, engaging in relaxation. I feel that chair yoga has really improved my range of motion because I'm able to stabilize myself with each pose on the chair by hanging on. I feel safe because I always have my chair there. <laughs> yoga has taught me to be aware of my body much more acutely. I'm aware of my posture. <laughs> I'm aware of how parts of my body are working and whether I'm using them properly. I see myself getting better already, so it helps to be positive when you see some positive results. Do you have any parts of your body that hurt? No. No, nothing hurts? Not right now. Maybe well, sometimes it hurts, but it doesn't hurt now. When I'm there consistently, I notice that the aches and the joints are a little less. I know one of the things that keeps me coming back to a yoga class is that inevitably I feel better at the end of the class than I did when I came in. And now, with my more recent thinking in, in chair yoga, being more aware of the parts of my body, I think I can, through the breathing and, and focusing on those areas, I think I can make a difference to my own curing of my own body. <laughs>